Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about my most surprising books of 2023. I chose five books for this video that I went into without many expectations and they all surprised me in one way or another. These books are in no particular order and let's just get to the first one which was a recent read and this was The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangyu Mandana. This book was a delight to read. It is a cozy fantasy and it was just a really fun time to read this book over the holidays. This one is about witches. It is an adult book, but there are themes of found family, magical hijinks, and also it's so, so cozy. We meet Mika Moon, who is a witch, and she is posting videos online about pretending to be a witch, but that goes against the role in place for her, which is that witches are not allowed to expose themselves to the general public. When Mika gets a mysterious message from a family requesting her to teach three young witches, she takes up that offer to go to Nowhere House, which is set somewhere in Britain, and things really just kick off from there. First off, the thing that I noticed immediately was that the writing is really concise, but it still is very conducive to create that witchy, cozy atmosphere that you would expect. And I just made it to be a very quick read, especially for the holiday season and around this wintry type of weather. Mika, as a protagonist, is very easy to like. She is Indian and there are other POC characters and I really like that aspect of the book. As for the romance, we do have a slow buildup between a grumpy and sunshine pairing they are both quite weary of each other because of their tough childhoods and past, although their dynamic felt very natural together. This one is definitely something that you want to pick up if you want something that's cozy with witches and romance. The next book that surprised me this year was The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I had first read Circe by the same author and it didn't really hit me like The Song of Achilles did because I think Circe is very slow paced but then I thought that Song of Achilles was more up my alley and I was right. This is a retelling of the epic Greek legend of Achilles and Patroclus. Achilles is a Greek mythical hero and we see his adventures through another person perspective from Patroclus who is a exiled prince. With these two, we see how their sweet friendship develops through their childhood, their youth in training, as well as they head off to war together. I really like the contrast between the two characters of Achilles being a destined hero and warrior versus Patroclus not being a warrior at heart. We see how their relationship evolves and stands the test of being involved in the Trojan War, high expectations, and also prophecies from gods and goddesses. And while doing some background research on the Song of Achilles, this is actually Madeline Miller's debut book and I am very impressed because she really does show off how different conflicting desires in your life can be very difficult to navigate such as choosing the love of your life versus pursuing glory. The writing is very sharp and full of emotion and if you're looking for something that is a mythological retelling, pick this one up. Another cozy fantasy I picked up and really enjoyed was Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. This one is a little bit more darker than the very secret society of irregular witches. This one has a good mix of academic research without being too overbearing with the academic speak. And we also have a light romance thrown in there. I've discovered with cozy fantasy or atmospheric books, I'm a little bit more cautious going into those type of books because I don't know if I will enjoy it, mainly because of how the writing is. If the writing is way too lyrical, I end up not really enjoying that type of book but sometimes you do find a couple of gems here and there. We're following Emily Wilde who is a Cambridge professor and she's going on a far off expedition to a remote village in Norway to conduct research on an elusive fae. Emily, she is a brilliant scholar but there's one thing that is not her forte is that she doesn't really like to socialize with people and that makes it really difficult to form a proper bond with the villagers and thus 
kind of interrupting her research. Then her academic rival shows up in the village, Wendell Bambley, and he's very quick to charm everyone and that is basically at the cost of just annoying Emily. However, there is a lot more than meets the eye to Wendell and Emily really doesn't care, she just doesn't want her research to be interrupted. Overall, I really love the characters in this one. Emily has such a deep thirst for knowledge and Wendell, he does have that secret that is revealed in a very satisfying way. I also really love the format of this book. It is written in um, something that I would describe as academic-like journal entries that Emily is writing and those entries are for her fairy encyclopedia. For the romance end, these two really play on their academic rivalries a lot. It really ends up in the unconventional partnership. We're also set in a wintry village with a lot of fae adventures going on and I would say this is a perfect read for the wintry months and it very is cozy. Then I picked up a historical fiction. This is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmis. And this one we're following Elizabeth Zott, who is a female chemist set in the 1960s. Elizabeth, she works in this all-male chemistry lab and all her colleagues just be her as a secretary. However, enter the innovative scientist Calvin Evans and he's the only one to really acknowledge Elizabeth to her brilliance and how her scientific research is very groundbreaking. But years later, we find Elizabeth is a single mother as well as the host of a successful cooking TV show. So how does she end up there? And finding out and reading about the Elizabeth's journey was an absolute delight. One of the key things that stood out to me was the writing. It's very quick and snappy and it's very easy to get into this story. Elizabeth represents a woman paving the path for other women to stand up for themselves and to not remain quiet, especially when things are not really making you happy in your life. There are other themes such as religion versus science, the patriarchy, misogyny, sexism, and also just being a woman and the strength in that. This is another one that I highly recommend as well. Last but not least, I wanted to talk about Babel by R.F. Kuang. This is a historical fiction with fantastical elements set in a dark academia setting. What is Babel about? There is a power of translations in this world. And you know that saying how something can get lost in translation? Well, in this world, that something being lost can be translated into silver bars, essentially magic. We're following Robin in this one, who is a young Chinese orphan, and he is whisked away to enter, after being trained and all, to enter into Babel, which is Oxford University's most prestigious academy for translation. However, in Britain, their imperial might might start a war with China over opium and the magical silver bars. Babel isn't an easy book to read. It really takes you on an intense journey of heartache, fight, and humanity. And we are set in 1830s England. We follow Robin from his youth to his years at Oxford and how he quickly develops a strong and deep friendship with his cohort. Robin is a protagonist who is very quiet, he has learned to keep to himself, not raise any flags. He is also very gifted in languages and he also grapples with changes in his morality throughout the book. There's also speak on racism, discrimination, as well as the after effects and still ongoing effects of colonialism in this book. And we also see the rise of a student resistance being formed. With all that being said, I really love the building tension and unrest at Oxford and there really is an explosive ending to this book. This one really made me think a lot and I think with that it did surprise me in ways that I wasn't expecting. It really is a different type of historical fiction, historical fantasy, and that's why I have it on my list. Those were all the books I wanted to mention today and I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Maybe added one or two to your TBR. I hope you all had a wonderful day. Don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and don't forget to ring the bell to not miss any future uploads and I will see you all in my next one. Bye.